Hello everyone, I'm Crow77, and today we're talking about early discard tile efficiency. We'll be specifically focusing on some common shapes around terminals and how to analyze them. So generally speaking, when new players are taught to play, they follow a few basic rules for early game discards. First one is discard single honor you don't need. It makes a lot of sense, you know, the honors can't form runs, so generally if you only have one of them, they're unlikely to be used in your hand. Next is discard tiles that are isolated. Again, this makes a lot of sense. If you just have a lone 8 in your hand, for example, most of the time that doesn't end up making it into your finished shape. And lastly is start looking for Yaku. We'll not be focusing too deeply on that last one in this video. I want to focus primarily on hand efficiency as opposed to scoring and making good shapes. So let's take a real life example. You sit down at a mahjong table in the dealer position, deal out the tiles, open up your hand, and you see this. What do you discard? Let's take a look, suit by suit, to analyze. We'll start with the easy ones, the honors. These are fairly self-explanatory overall. Early game, you don't want to be discarding the pair of Shah. They can be the pair that you need for your hand, even working with a Pinfu hand, or they can potentially develop into a triplet. The Tawn you would generally want to hold on to as well. Since it's a double Yaku high in the dealer position, it's worth more than any other isolated honor tile. You should generally hold on to these until your hand progresses significantly, or other players start discarding them. The Chun is the worst honor of what we have in the hand, and would be the one to discard here. However, due to some shapes in your other tiles, I think it's most likely best to hold on to this for now. Let's see why I say that and take a look at the Sozo. The 7 is a pretty good isolated tile to hold on to here, as there's many tiles that can improve it, so I want to focus on the 1-4 shape in this example. Now as we all know, we generally want to discard early terminals, hold on to central tiles, and progress as efficiently as possible. With this kind of shape though, the one so is much weaker than a typical isolated terminal. Let's take a look at what would happen if the four in this hand is improved, both with and without the one in hand. By drawing a two on the left, you can see we can further improve by drawing a three. But on the right, that doesn't change. The hand will accept a three either way, so the one doesn't really help out here. Similarly, by drawing a 3, we see the same thing. The 1 is left isolated, since the 4 connects better with the 3 than the 1 does, and both the 2 and a 5 can be accepted in either situation. So from a hand efficiency perspective, the 1 in this shape does not help at all. Now let's take a look at the Pinzu. With this shape, let's focus on the 1, 2, 4. Once again, the 1 pin is much weaker than an isolated terminal would be. The 1 does not add any accepted tiles to this. A 3-pin will just complete the run as normal. In addition, drawing a second 2-pin is not really desirable either. While it's not as bad as the Sozu, to make use of the 1 in this situation, you need to specifically draw two 3-pins, something that's pretty unlikely to happen overall. So from a hand efficiency perspective, the 1 in this shape only has very narrow applications. Note that if this shape were a 1-3-4 instead, there'd be no real change to this analysis. The one is still very bad in that situation. Lastly, let's take a look at the Manzu. The four or five block, even though it almost looks like it can be separated entirely from the terminal, does still affect it by cutting off the tiles that would otherwise improve the terminal. In this case, it uses the three if you draw one. This significantly hurts the ways the terminal can be improved, but there's still more options than the Pinju shapes. The two is independent of both the four and the five so it's able to improve the one. We end up in a situation, if that happens, where we need to draw either two threes or a three and a six to complete both shapes. This is still somewhat narrow, but much better than the Pinzu options that we looked at. So what do you really discard in this situation? End of the day, based on what I've just discussed here, the best discards are either gonna be the one so or the one pin. The value of those is pretty close overall, but in this situation, I think I'd discard the one so just because of those very narrow applications that I discussed where it is theoretically possible that we'd end up using this one pin. But there's quite a few situations, aside from this hand, that don't necessarily mean the terminal should be discarded, despite having one of these shapes I've discussed. Let's take a quick look at those as well. The most notable time is when you're playing for certain Yaku. While you generally should only force Yaku in very specific situations, all these situations are less forcing and more taking a minor hit to efficiency to keep the option of the Yaku open. So first, Itsu. If the rest of your hand looks like it has good Itsu chances, a lot of times you will want to hold on to this one. We can see in this hand here we already have 7 tiles to the Itsu in the Pinzu, despite having the 1-2-4 shape that we already discussed. 
So in this situation, since you are so close to that Itsu, it makes more sense to discard the isolated 7 mon than it does the 1 pin. Next is Sanshoku. You always have to keep an eye out for Sanshoku in all of your hands. It can be a good idea to keep a floating terminal if it leaves a high chance with Sanshoku. So we can see here, typically with the 9-6, it's just the mirror of the 1-4. So we would typically want to discard the terminal. However, if we do that, then it's going to significantly reduce our chances of Sanshoku. So in this situation, I would cut the 6 and keep the 9. So that way, if we draw either a 7 or an 8, we'll be in Tenpai for Sanshoku. Next is probably the most obvious one, Junchan and Chanta. If your hand is almost assuredly going to be some kind of outside hand like that, you want to discard the 4 over the 1 pretty much every time. The 4 can't be used in either Junchan or Chanta, so the 1 is just a natural tile to keep in your hand. And lastly is Toy Toy and Chi Toitsu, either all triplets or 7 pairs. A lot of times, since terminal tiles are less desirable to other players, they'll tend to come out a little bit more. So if you draw a pair of 1s as opposed to a pair of 4s, they'll be more likely to be called for Toy Toy. Or, if you end up on a wait at the end of the game for 7 pairs, the 1 is more likely to be dealt in, especially if there's a Suji trap from discarding this 4. Another exception we need to take a look at is actually an efficiency example as well. Now, if your hand is very close to Tenpai, and you don't have another good pair to use, such as this hand here, then it can make sense to hold on to this one. Typically, based on what I've been discussing before, it would make sense to strike the 1 from the 1-3-4 shape. However, since we still need that pair, we should discard the 9-so, leaving the 1-mon. That way, if the hand progresses further by drawing a 2-mon, then we have a much better weight, a Nobetan, waiting on the 1 and the 4, than if we had just, without thinking, discarded the 1 and kept the 9. So what are the takeaways from this? Overall, a 1-4 shape makes the 1 very bad. Unless you're going for a specific Yaku, you should almost always prioritize discarding the 1. This is only for efficiency only, though. If you're looking at Yaku, then sometimes it can make sense to hold on to those terminal tiles in these situations. Isolated terminals are better than terminals with other incomplete shape shapes near them, in a lot of cases. Analyze your hands and figure out exactly which tiles actually improve your hand and whether or not the terminals are needed. And lastly, expand this analysis to even more than just terminals. A 2-4-5 shape has a lot of the same problems that a 1-3-4 shape does, and a lot of times it can make sense to cut the 2 as well. Alright everyone, thank you very much for watching. If you have any feedback, topic ideas, or questions, please leave a comment below or send me an email directly at crow.mahjong at gmail.com. Thanks for watching and have a good one.